you know, I got a little heat from a couple of dudes with, you know, on the other, the, one of the clips that we did about uh, Patrice and, you know, I have the utmost respect for him and the dude was phenomenal, but I, we're almost talking 20 years old and, and there's so much that we've learned beyond that and, and, and things that we've disregarded that kind of was an understanding at the time that we were doing it. There's a mythology that takes place when somebody passes away because you're bigger in death than you were, your career is bigger in death than in life. Yeah. You know, that they took on a life of their own. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. And I am excited. Harry, what's popping? What's going oh, on? Dante, you know me. I'm just a kid with a dream and a podcast. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm living the life right now. Day by day, we're figuring it out learning new things no you know changing old philosophies um you know making them better always uh, evolving you gotta evolve you can't just I, stay I, the same i gotta i gotta you know i got a little heat from a couple of dudes with you know uh people were going back on the other the one of the clips that we did about uh patrice and and uh you know it was a little bit of clickbait because uh, you know i have the utmost respect for him and the utmost love for him and as a as a brain dude was phenomenal but I, but what i what i think is interesting is the the need for people to stay the same um a lot of people have gone you know they listen to the original black philip and and don't get me wrong i mean it was phenomenal for its time um i think that we were saying things that guys who are doing um who are doing uh real you know, who are doing, you know, in that that whole manosphere or in that manosphere now uh, in a situation where they're doing what we did in 2006. But I definitely feel as though as a as an individual that I've matured a lot more, um, that I believe the show has matured a lot more. And the man's philosophies have matured. They've changed. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I mean, without a doubt, I feel like if we have been doing this and still been talking about the same things that we were talking about in 2006 when Black Phillip came out, I mean, let's 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 be clear. I mean, it's 2024. It'll be 2026 in a minute. We're almost talking 20 years old, 20 philosophies that are 20 years old. And, and there's so much that we've learned beyond that and, and, and things that we've disregarded that kind of was an understanding at the time that we were doing it. But really just changed like one of the things that we used to talk about is there's the three categories of women and we used to talk about how there's bunnies deers and bears and it was kind of a a way for us to kind of simplify the three uh levels of aggressive women that are maybe what would be perceived as now more masculine um so there's all this thing about uh you know, a little more intense personality, a lot more, uh, yeah, a lot more uh, boisterous, a lot more aggressive, you know, a lot more I, I, I attitude, think in energy. The climate, in the climate of today, we would call it, we would refer to it as as masculine. There's this idea of masculinity and women being, uh, having, a, being more objective and louder, like you said. The difference is, just, just going back to what we were talking about with, the Black Phillip show. Um, the thing that happens now, especially after Patrice passed away, these shows took a life. These shows have been heard more times on YouTube than, than they were they, ever yeah. listened to when it was yeah. going down. Yeah. And so what happens is there's a mythology that takes place when somebody passes away. Not that Patrice wasn't a great comedian because he right, was. Right. right. But, you know, it's an Elvis syndrome, a James Dean syndrome, where now everything is... There's a Tupac this, this, syndrome. Tupac, yeah, where now people, because because you're bigger in death than you were, your career is bigger in death than in life, so people go back and listen to these things, and they were shocking at the time because mm -hmm. nobody was saying them. Right. There wasn't anybody out there. Very few people were out there really talking about relationships in this brutal upfront fashion. Yeah. You know, that they took on a life of their own and people love those shows and that's great. But again, the problem is, what did you say? They were in 2006 when you guys made 2006. them? The first one was done. We did in 2006. Not only did we not just do it in 2006, but it was, it was only 13 episodes between 2006 and 2008. In the course of, of two years, 
which is 24 months, we did 13 episodes, which is really I minute. Mean, that's not it even was specials. Week. It wasn't a series. You know, they yeah. were like specials whenever you guys, your schedule would arrange and they'd have a Saturday night open. That's when they would do them. They'd broadcast. Yeah. Yeah. Them. Yeah. But the but point is this, <clears throat> people, you know, they view those things. They love those things and they're, and they're entertaining as fuck. And there is advice there that it, in portions that it is valid. The thing is, unfortunately, Patrice passed away, so you don't get to hear what Patrice would have said now. And yeah. just as a, and I knew Patrice a little bit. I don't pretend to know him well. I only worked with him a couple times at clubs in New York City. I'm not mm -hmm. pretending that I knew him well at all. But just following him as a fan, what you learned about Patrice was Patrice changed all the time. Yeah, Patrice evolved a lot. Even if yeah. you want, if you listen to all those Opie and Anthony shows, you know there there are new revelations that he would have. Yeah. There are yeah. new revelations he'd have with you all the time, yeah. Dante, yeah. correct? Absolutely. I mean, I remember him I, at the time I was married and I was raising uh, I, I was raising a stepdaughter at the time. And um, the comedy community knew my little stepdaughter because she hung out with me, came into the comedy clubs and she grew up around comics. And um, so I remember when he when he was uh, hanging out with Vaughn and Vaughn's daughter and basically became the the masculine figure in in Vaughn's daughter's life, um, it, he didn't understand how that would affect him. And what I I said to him is, look, you know, I mean, as as harsh as people would say he was, he, he was a real sweetheart in a lot of ways. And I was like, you don't have the muscle to push her away, to push this little. And I mean, if you you if you ever see Vaughn's daughter, she's a uh, it's beautiful kid. Like, look, she looked like when she was a kid. She looked like a little brat doll, big old eyes and just smile, you know, and 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 it's funny because Patrice would go, Patrice, would, he would go, she would go, hi, Mr. P. And and he would go, ah, oh, you stink. And she would go, I love you, Mr. P. Like she she didn't pay any of his grumbling any mind because at the core of who he was, was, was a kind and loving individual. Sure. Um, and I think vice versa is also the case is that your actions, your actions are what matter. I mean, you could say a lot of things you could say, but if you're the actions don't line up with, with what you're, what you're actually thinking about now, here's something I'm interested in hearing what your, your take is on this. Okay. Um, being masculine being a man, being righteous, stamina up, being a provider, being a guy who keeps a woman safe, being a guy who's decisive, a guy who is uh, unaffected, because I think it's really interesting that uh, the concept, and we don't really talk about this a lot, is being unaffected. What I mean is that the world is going crazy and somehow you still maintain a calm, and demean calm demeanor where you can make decisions on the fly, even though the world is ending and the sky is falling. Those are the things that make people make people. And we, you know, we would normally say that it's women make women feel as though. But what you realize is that when you're the calm, assertive, unaffected man in the room, even men follow you. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, plenty of times that, you know, and, and, and you would agree with this, I think I think well, I'm going to ask you. I, I shouldn't speak for you because that's that's not fair. But I mean, you've seen me in situations where somebody was unruly in a comedy club or something like that, and I've stepped up and taken charge. Sure. And men around me have um, men around me have fallen in line. Sure. I mean, even guys who wouldn't normally be OK, this this is how this should be handled. They literally will go. It seems to me like he knows what he's doing. He's, it's, it's, he's too calm. He's too. And I mean, we could be and you and I have been at where I've been in the eye of the storm. Sure. Where yeah. There's Many still times. a calm. Yeah, and, yeah because you're so w what that comes from, it comes from uh practice of being there and little baby steps so i'll give you a small example of where i wasn't affected by it because you weren't right. there for it's this funny because you said that because i was thinking about that you you're actually it's really interesting to me because you're evolving 
And, sure. and, yeah. and, you know, I'm watching you evolve and there's things that I've said to you long times and just you didn't get it. But I realized this is I, I could agree with the same thing when it comes to Patrice. There was things that he said to me about comedy that I didn't get until I got there. Until and then when I got situation, there, it clicked. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It yes. clicked. So, and sometimes that information takes a little bit of time. So the thing that, that Dante has been really hammering home to me lately is. Because I've always, I was always the nice guy, right? And we got a lot of nice guy listeners, right? The the nice guys who who finish last. Let me week. just say this: I was the nice guy. You are a nice guy, but, uh, the, but I mean, when I say nice guy, I'm using it as a different. I'm using yes, it as but the. I, uh, but I want. I think people don't understand that my particular evolution. That I was the guy who didn't confront. I mean, we, fair we, enough. We That's forgotten about. about. School, yeah. You know, elementary school, You're high bullied. school. Bullied. Yeah, I, yeah, I absolutely was bullied, but we'll we'll talk to that. I mean, to interrupt. Well, so, so the the notion is Dante is always trying to tell me to go. F I keep going further, but he wants me to go quicker. With yeah. when someone's being rude, someone's being. I'm a guy who gives you like three or four shots before I go in because I want to be sure that uh, you deserve for me to go in. But what Dante has been hammering home, and he was right about it, is trusting your instinct and go because my instincts are good because I'm not a bad person. Right. So if exactly. somebody is being an asshole yeah. and they're going to get the wrath, it's because they're being an asshole, and I know they're being an asshole, and my yeah. instincts tell me, and also the experience, especially when you're at comedy clubs. So here's an example of something that I, I was we we're hanging at a bar, and a guy said some type of comment of what I should say on stage, like, "Hey, next time you're on stage, you should say this." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for me, I'm like, uh, "Yeah, yeah, this fucking idiot talking to me." I, I just kind of go, yeah, "Yeah, I'll keep that in mind and keep it moving." And I move, I leave. Mm. But Dante's thing is, you should have told him how disrespectful he was being because he keeps being disrespectful. Right. You're not wrong about that, and I have a different philosophy, but I'm uh, my philosophy is is becoming more entrenched in your philosophy because the more I go in faster and faster the more i'm satisfied with it because those people deserve it i'm not i'm not a guy who flies off the handle you got to figure that part out um know what what you are there was a situation that happened in a club where a guy was was drunk right so i in, instead of just waiting and trying to give it a shot after shot i gave it like one shot to, to correct it and then i got to throw the guy out the guy ends up being real drunk you know, and uh, he starts talking to the comics, walking in the showroom, and I grab him, and I got you got to go, you got to go. He's so fucked up that he starts now, because <clears throat> this has been like, I've been more mm. aggressive on the stage, more aggressive, and just policing the room because no one else yeah. will do it. Right. No one else does it. The female bartender's not going to do it. The young comics aren't going to do it because they don't want to lose their spot at the club. So it falls on somebody. Somebody has to step up because otherwise this asshole is going to ruin the show and ruin people's night. So that falls mm -hmm. on me. So now I'm going to be the guy who does it. I'm getting into, uh, this guy starts to go a little nuts, right? Uh, and he starts going, hey, don't touch my fucking jacket. This is like 30 seconds after I touch his jacket. He's out of his fucking mind. Don't touch my jacket. Don't touch my jacket, bro. I go, yeah, yeah, all right. So I have decisions to make at this point. And this is the point where it's be unaffected. Because I'm not like, or I'm going to fuck this guy up. I got to go, I could say something right now and rile him up and that'll provoke a fight. But, you know, I'm, I'm doing all this stuff, thinking, being calm, like assessing the situation. I look to the left of me. Is there anyone? My girlfriend's to the left. I got comics to the right. They're far enough. The door is down the way. You're just thinking instead of just reacting and yelling and being calm. But that comes from practice, right? So what I realized after the fact that all I said to the guy was like, you got to go. You got to go. Whatever he said to me, I didn't engage because he's fucked up in the head. He's drunk. Yeah. He's fucked he's up. Not, he's not comprehending he's it. Not comprehending it. He's not it. processing it. I gave him a chance to comprehend it, but when, you re when a dog starts barking at you, you don't get on all fours and start barking at the dog. It's pointless. Right, right, right. right so all right. I said, out, out, out. He keeps saying his shit out till finally, like, he leaves. I assess that he's got a bottle in his hand. He steps forward. I step back. I don't let, you know, I'm assessing all this. I realized after the fact, and I told Dante this, my blood pressure, my heartbeat did not go up. Uh, and that blew my mind because that's- Did you not understand why that wasn't the case? or I, cause I, I understand why I, in hindsight it's the case. Okay, why just, do you think that it wasn't? It because was, it comes from practice of, of having conflict. Because before to me, I, was, I would avoid conflict at all costs. Right. Even if it wasn't my fault. 
I would try to give somebody an out just to avoid the conflict. Now, would I don't you, like conflict. I mean, if I ask you just to be honest about this, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know you not to be honest. Sure. But if you love what we're doing here, go to Patreon.com. It's the best way to support us and check out all the bonus content. That's right. Patreon.com slash Manschool202. We do weekly bonus episodes. We do listener mail, dating tips. And also, if you love the show, you can go back to the archives starting from episode one. All the episodes will be there at Patreon.com slash Manschool202. Would you, in my perspective, I'm going to say that doing that is fear. Of what? Doing what is fear? Which part? Doing, like, not confronting it not going is a certain level of fear i'm not saying fear it's of fear in sense it's fear in sense of i do not like right. conflict uh, right and that now, comes from an upbringing right? I, I get really I, yeah. funny about that because you don't want to you know i've done that on consultations where People i go get you're insulted. not you're not doing this because of fear and that and that that's always an insult to a man it's like what do you, what do you mean i'm afraid i'm not afraid of you know, but what the, but but it is the acceptance of understanding that if need be, I have my principles are in place and I am willing to go this far. Like I, sure. I this if if this becomes disrespectful to the point, I I already know what I'm willing to do and I'm comfortable with the extent of how willing I'm far to go. So but once you have that established, you, you don't want to go there. But you also have an understanding of when it goes there. So what's interesting about that and how do we bring this into relationships? Because what we're talking about is there is a there is an uh, instinctual thing where in you're in this relationship where you don't want the relationship to end. And so because you don't want the relationship to end, you are willing to make consignments. You haven't really decided how far you're willing to go. Even though it has you, it, you don't have also why you avoid the conflict, because sure. you, you have a fear that the conflict will end the relationship or will right. weaken the relationship or create a conflict or whatever. But what you have to understand is and and and, and I, I, I mean, the, the, and I think this is where what we do here is, is distinctly different. You cannot be in a relationship where somebody is disres doesn't respect you. You cannot be you can't have any relationship where somebody doesn't respect you at a core level. Now, we can decide where that respect lies, um, what we perceive as respectful or not respectful. But there's never a situation once you understand that I will not move forward in my life at any course without having the person that there is a social dynamic with us that I will not allow you to disrespect me at your job, at your, your mama, your daddy, your family, your woman, your children. Sure. You yeah. have to say because, I've had, I've had to set those boundaries using the same aspects for not just relationships, work relationships. I've had to do that and relationships with my mom and dad separately. I've had to do the same thing where we, you have to set a line and you go, I'm not going to be disrespected. You have to determine, obviously, what that level is. But in right. your heart, you know what it is. It, right. When you feel uncomfortable. There's a reason for it. There's a reason for it. If, and, you're, re if, you're, if you're a reasonable person, I've, I'm, you know. I've been dealing. I'm dealing with with my my the mother of my son, my my wife, and how there is a a level of lack of understanding that she has, and because she has that lack of understanding, it's she thinks she knows, and she you know there's a difference of opinion. But I will not allow the disrespect, and if it means that none of this happens, if it means that. I'm going to be in a situation where I'm I may never see my son. I am willing to do that if somebody's going to be disrespectful. And anybody that knows me knows that I'm willing to go that far. You have to, you have to be willing to walk away because that is the that is the ultimate fear that people have and yeah. that ends up handcuffing them to a bad situation. Sure. Because they're so worried about, I don't want to lose this. I may never get another one. And then instead, you, you're just stuck in a terrible situation, a terrible predicament. And so going back to the fight, the thing that I want to tie into the relationship part of it, 
you know, that didn't happen overnight. It's not like I went, uh, you know, Dante has been, you know, he's been my brother for years. Yeah, yeah. Giving me these dribs and drabs of advice and, you know, and I practiced them even inch by inch. And, and, and to be honest, that sometimes I was really frustrated. I mean, there was times when we've had rough patches where I was really frustrated and not because I didn't understand what your thinking was, I, because I was like, you, there is no, you don't have an option. There's no other There's way to no do option it. In There's this. no other way to do it. There's no other way to live your life. But my point is, little by little, I've engaged in conflict. It's not physical. Not necessarily. I'm not. I'm not no. talking about. I'm out there street fighting people. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not pretending to be a tough guy. By the way, by any means, I don't know what this guy's fighting skills were. Were all I know is that if it went down, I have to protect myself. I kept an eye on his hand with the beer bottle in it. He's fucked up. The odds are I had a chance. I'm going to be fine. But still, the point is when you go little by little, just the verbal conflicts, just the verbal stopping people where you, <coughs> where you would normally let them go for yeah. being disrespectful, for somebody talking to you in a rude fashion. And, you know, as you build that up, you develop a callus or you develop a, you know, a comfort with it where it's not scary anymore and it, it doesn't end in your you know your life being affected it doesn't end in you getting fired it doesn't end with you right you know as far as relationship it didn't it doesn't end the relationship right and that's when you never know, does it never, never does never does it, because the other person doesn't want to the the thing that ends relationships is when that person stops giving a fuck that's the yeah. more dangerous when part, they, when they stop respecting you yeah when, when you when you lose that sense of respect in a relationship Pack your bags. I've said this a hundred times. If your girl all of a sudden decides, hey, you know, I was thinking about getting into, I mean, I realize I'm exploring women and I was thinking about us maybe doing threesomes or maybe, you know, or maybe we have, or oh, especially this, if somebody goes, I'm, I'm willing to have an open relationship, pack your bags. There's one thing if a woman comes into the relationship and she goes, this is something and you're gradually walking to that because this is something that you're interested in having an open relationship. But if it becomes a revelation as a result of the relationship, pack your bags. The minute your woman has your lady has no respect for you, it is over. Hmm. Start putting your ducks in a row. It's over. Yeah. Well, when you're talking about, I think you brought up uh, Tupac to talk about evolving as right. a, as an individual. When you talk about Patrice, Patrice would have evolved. Oh, he would because he evolved he all the time. Ev well, he was evolved. I mean, the things yeah. that we we did. The last show that we did in Black Phillip was 2008. Yeah, he was distinctly a different person in after 2006. That. Yeah, two and after that, it was yeah. 2006 to 2008 yeah. was the last show yeah. that we did. But even uh, just looking at the because it's interesting because the thing that that I think sometimes uh, annoys you a little bit and rightfully so is when people in the comment section will post videos and most of the comments are great. Thank you for all the comments that you guys leave. We, it helps out a lot. So Appreciate please it. like, share, subscribe and comment every once in a while. Somebody we reach n new people who haven't been following the show and then right, all right, of a sudden right. they go. Yo, Dante, what happened to you? You got soft, you know, because it's not as volatile as the the Black Phillip show would be. And the thing is that it's not the same because it's evolved. It's different. And you learn things just like, number one, Patrice evolved. You can see how he evolved even in just yeah. his style. He had phases. There was the football yeah. jersey phase. Yeah. Then he did the big suit. There was, suits suit, there was suits and, and fedoras. I remember yeah. when I took him to get all his fedoras broke down and cut down yeah. in shape. It was alligator shoes. And then it was, then it was somewhere in between that, you know. Yeah. Um, and I mean, we... Every, sorry, I, I just one more yeah, point. No, you're right. Everyone evolves. LeBron James has evolved. Absolutely. LeBron James does not play the game no. the same way he did in, in 2003. He can't. No. He's, no. he's, he's had to adjust and change and learn how the league flows. And it's and smarter. Learn how the games change. It's and smarter. How the, yeah, and smarter. If, and, if you're dealing with some woman who is, who is without a doubt unruly, disrespectful, and unappreciative, get out. If you're with a woman, fellas, if you're with a woman that you, you, uh, uh, if you, uh, women, if you're with a guy who is abusive, physically abusive, emotionally abusive, get out. It will not get better. Um, 
you, you and then you have to understand that. Uh, but there's principles that still exist and still stand true. One of the things I say, anytime you do something for somebody more than three times, it's no longer a favor. It becomes an obligation. People take for granted what you give and what you do. And then they expect it as it as it just should be because you've been doing it. And when you see that you are to extinguish the behavior immediately. Uh, the other thing is I, I meet, I've, I've learned that you meet this, the disrespect, the unappreciativeness, you meet it with action. You don't meet it with words. Mm, what um, does that mean? What's an example of that? For, exa- for example, um, if, if, I'm, uh, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm doing things that take care of you or pick you up and whatever, and all of a sudden I find out that I'm picking you up from the train and I'm making sure, so you get here or I'm or I'm making sure the best, you know, you come to my house, the snacks you like is in the fridge and you don't appreciate that. Or you go, what happened? I'm, oh, you didn't get no. You will never see another box of Oreo cookies again in your life. You will never and you will have to ask me what happened. Why. And then when you ask, go ahead. No, go no, ahead. meaning that. No, you go. What happened? What happened? Oh, well, you were very rude and uh, you weren't appreciative. So I stopped buying the cookies for you. Just understand something. I am not in this. I, and I think there's an understanding of this that I think is really important. You, I say this to everybody. You have to be the version, the best version of yourself. Because when you, when you are the best version of yourself, you are abundantly putting yourself forward to somebody. You are saying, by being with me, this is what you get. You get all of this in this in the glory. You get protection. You get safety. You get and you get somebody who's going to listen. Somebody who wants to hear what you have to say. Somebody who is going to have a discussion with you in good faith, so that we can we can both grow. Because I'm I don't always know I don't always know the right thing. I'm willing to listen to somebody, but I'm willing. To have it, and and I, what's interesting about that is the the relationship that I had with Patrice was just like that. It, he would, this is what I think, and I would say I don't, I don't really agree with that. And he would go, really, what? Why not? And then we would have a dialogue about it. And then, sure. and sometimes he wouldn't. Sometimes we wouldn't agree, right? But the the point was what we were trying to do. We were both trying to grow. We were both trying to be better. We were both trying to be more mature. We were both trying to be more efficient. Um, Life is finite. Every day that we get up and we put our feet on the ground and we transfer a day of our life for whatever we transfer in that day. So understand this when you are when you are. You are working, you are, you are living your days. Every day that you get up, you are closer to death. You have a limited amount of, uh, li- a limited amount of, of, sunsets. of, 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 yeah. of sunsets and that, and you better, you better, you know, appreciate not waste that. it, not waste it and appreciate it. And, and the part of it is like when you're in a relationship that is when you're not happy and you're not happy every day, something is wrong. And yeah. you have to g- either fix it or you got to get out. Or you got to get out. Yeah. Or you got you to attempt to fix it. And if it can't be fixed, you got to realize that it can't be fixed. And it's time to go because life is finite and it's not fair to be unhappy because somebody else does not understand you or respect you. But also looking at yourself, are you doing everything to be the best version of yourself? That's why it becomes so important to be the best version of yourself for you, not yeah. for her. That's the one thing that is consistent yeah. with the Black Phillip show it is it was about living your life to the best for you not for somebody right. else right right putting your happiness first because if you don't she won't if you don't he won't you got to be the best version of those things and what's what's it's and it's in the insanity of thinking that you're going to be in a relationship with somebody on a core level doesn't respect you or sometimes where they respect you and they don't even know how to express that respect in in in, uh, in 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 real time because they haven't um they're used to toxic situations they're used to passive aggressive this they're they're not used to truth and being up front um and uh and and I think that you also have to which is interesting because it parallels what you were saying when you would when you were tossing this drunk dude out it, there was no real conversation what you knew you you have to you you have to meet 
the force, where the force needs it. It's you're not going to have a discussion with him, but you're also not going to let some drunk dude escalate, uh, escalate to violence when it's just not necessary. But you have to understand that it could go there and you got to be comfortable. Shout out to Chuck Nice. I would say you got to be comfortable with the lizard. Be comfortable with the worst. I, I won't say the worst version, version of yourself, but the most dangerous version of yourself where you don't give a fuck, but it shouldn't be done out of emotion. Never let emotion have a seat at the table. I've, I've, I've been going back and forth with some of the guys on the, on the comments, which again, I appreciate the comments and, and at me, at me, ask me the question, ask me, ask me to clarify it. The, the, um, the, the, conversation you present to yourself as the immovable object when you're right now that doesn't mean that you're not open for suggestion but when the suggestions have happened and it, and it, and it pushes against your principles you have to be man enough to go 10 toes down and say this is this is what it is because i understand i've been there done that and i'm not going to continue to do things in that way um we re- I, this idea of submissive women. Absolutely. I think that a woman, women should be submissive to a situation where it's, but I mean, if you're asking a woman to, to blindly follow you, when you I know be a good leader, the you bunch of poop butt motherfuckers, half ass reckless motherfuckers that are reckless with their own life. How dare you? How dare you? I've never had a situation where I'm the, I remember years ago we had, um, I forget the guy, we had somebody on love and hip hop. And I go, I said, uh, have you ever had a drink thrown in your face? Um, God, what was his name, bro? You remember his name? Something but Rico. He, I, I forget, but he, oh, he goes, oh, come on, you on, you on love and hip hop. Everybody gets to do. Doug, I've never had no chick throw a drink in my face because I'm not a drink in the face kind of guy. I'm not saying that I'm such a badass that nobody would ever. What I'm saying is you if you're paying attention, if you're present, you know that this is escalating, that this is disrespectful and this is escalating and you can walk away from it in a real sense. But if you don't have value and you're walking away from something because you're or you're staying because you're afraid to lose it. You, you can't. That's when I say make ultimate decisions. Don't give ultimatums is making the decisions based on the, the reality of what's happening at the time. And that's uh, Cisco from Love and Hip Hop, by the yeah, way. Cisco. Which, uh, yeah. And if you want to see the, those uh, or listen to those episodes, rather, we're going to be posting all of that on Patreon. By the way, patreon.com slash manschool202. That's where we have all the archived episodes that we're uploading, I think, one a day at this point uh, when we started out as the Beige Phillips Show. And plus, we do a bunch of bonus content. It's a great way to support the show. You get dating advice. You get to communicate with us. It's uh, it's a fantastic way to support the show, manschool202. Uh, Let me cover this real quick. Be- before we stop this, this was the comment. All right, Somebody said, nothing wrong with anger when channeled correctly. I was talking about about why you can't have an emotion have it why you can't let at the a- table. anger emotion have a seat at the table yeah and and he was like there's nothing wrong with emotion if it's channeled correctly um the point is emo- uh anger doesn't allow you to be precise about how you channel it you you're if you're if you're saying that something has happened that it makes you uncomfortable and you're moving forward in terms of how you deal with that that's that's not anger that's not anger. Anger means that you are out of control. I don't yeah. care whether it's channeled in the right direction or it's not channeled in the right direction. You, it, you, you have to remove yourself from this, step back and make decisions from a from as an unemotional place as possible. And so going back to the fight I had at the club, shout out to Eastville Comedy Club, where I was at. Shout uh, out to Marco. Too. So. I was unaffected by it and I had to figure out what the best case scenario is. And it wasn't done out of anger because if it was out of anger, him I could have been angry about him fucking up the show. I mean, I was annoyed about that. I could have been angry that, you know, he's getting physically violent with me and he's being a piece of shit uh, and kind of threatening me. I mean, he was threatening me, right? I could have let anger and, but I had to go, what is the, what did he threaten si- you? Did he say he would do something? He didn't or- verbally threaten me, but his body but posture, he- and he stepped close to me a couple times, which I could have taken as an opportunity to take him down, to go, you know, to sweep the legs and take him down. 
and it would have been justifiable in a yeah. sense because he approached me. Right. But I but what I realized is one, this dude is drunk, number one, right? He's probably fucked up. There's some shit going on with his life. Is this gonna yeah, this ain't about you? Huh? This is not this about was me. not about you because he came in like that. It has nothing to do with me. It has nothing yeah. to do with the show. It has nothing. He's in his own universe. So, you know, it was explaining kind of as a joke to my girlfriend afterwards because she was, you know, she got a little like, you know, high energy about it. Like, oh, my God. I go, I did that guy a favor. Yeah. I did do him a favor because I could have I could have really hurt this guy. He was fucked up. He was drunk. But what would that have done? One, now the show stopped completely. Now we got to call an ambulance. Now somebody needs to go to the hospital. Now yeah. we got to fill out police reports. That's just inconvenience, number one. Number two, somebody else could have gotten hurt. Maybe he, you know, he charges at me. I throw him into a table. Somebody else gets hurt. That's not what I want. Uh, I could have gotten hurt. But he you still have hurt. to be comfortable with the ambulance. If, with absolutely. The but and, that's and, the last and, and once thing you, I wanted. Once, right. Once you, you understand what the end degree of that it allows you it allows you to gauge the sweet spot to know that you can go there yeah. and it might go there allows you to go well okay that's a possibility do I need to? Do now I need what to? else can i do yeah aside from that and so that's the lesson of like even in a relationship yeah i can end this i can pull the plug on this yeah and i'll have to be okay and that's a possibility what else can i do before we get to that point to avoid that yeah. Before, yeah. you know, and still maintain my respect. Yeah. And, and in a place where I'm happy and I'm 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 feeling good about it and I can move on in a in a real way, uh, in a real comfortable way, because I know that I made the right decision. If you have emotion, emotion brings in ego and ego clouds your judgment. So I disagree with that emphatically. Any uh, and anger doesn't any uh, uh, anger brings that ego out where the ego goes. You don't know who the fuck I am. You don't know what I, this is. A la of course, no, they don't know. They if they knew and they knew what you were willing to do, a lot of times they wouldn't even. They, they half the time, if you're you're you about that life, then you wouldn't have uh, you wouldn't have approached in the first place. Let's go, um, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD. What would Dante do to sexual revolution as we in podcasting? I love y'all, man. Um, thanks for listening. Support, like, subscribe, tell a friend, tell a friend. We are out. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't.